On the breakfast, insecurity continues to be an issue across the nation as suspected terrorists attack worshippers at the St. Francis Catholic Church or war with many dead. Is a regional security architecture the solution to insecurity in Nigeria? Also on the breakfast, governors of the All Progressive Congress from the Northern region have asked party to zone its presidential ticket to the south. Where does this leave the party and what will it look like in 2023? Don't forget, as always, we'll be looking through the papers this morning. Uh, to be very precise, the front pages of national dailies and analyzing the big stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast in Plus TV Africa. I am Messi Bopo. I'm not very sure if I should say it's a beautiful Monday morning because of what happened yesterday. Part of our top trending conversation, we're talking about the OWA tax. And uh, it's, I'm, I'm going to try, you know, as much as I can. And I'm sure that my producer is also in support of this, that I don't shed tears this morning uh, on the show. Right. So yesterday, uh, it's a Black Sunday for Nigerians. It's a Black Sunday for everyone. It has nothing to do with a certain region. It has nothing to do with a certain religion. It's the fact that Nigerians actually lost their lives because you have some element, unidentified men who went to a church, St. Catholic, I mean, St. Francis Catholic Church, shooting sporadically and killing a lot of persons. And, and that has left a lot of people mourning. I mean, this is a conversation that should continue forever and last forever. But we really do not know how that's going to be. It's really sad, and I really don't know, choice of my words, um, what it's going to be. But it's sad. Now, this is not the first time we're having this incident. It will not be the second time. But it's really sad that the only offense of a people is the fact that they, they stepped out of their houses. Everyone has a right to an assembly, a peaceful assembly. As long as you're not a threat to, you know, national security, you have a right. And so people left their houses yesterday, they went to church, you know, those state, and all of a sudden, some of them are no more, as we speak right now. They cannot say anything, they're no longer alive. They're, they have been erased from the earth. So it calls for a lot of questioning, it calls for a lot of attack, that unfortunate incident. I'm sure that you probably have seen it, you have read it, you have heard about it, you have seen everything, you have engaged, and we are talking about it this morning, the war attack. But um, it, it brings us, you know, to the question that when you say you have a government, government talks about legitimacy. And so the reason why you have uh, governance is because the fundamental principle for government, the reason why government exists is that they will provide the basic protection of lives and property that is also enshrined in our constitution. But the Nigerian government has failed to protect lives and property. And the question is, do they have the legitimacy to govern the people? It's the question where you have failed to secure lives and properties. So there's a lot. And Max men got into the church, they shot people and killed them. You have different, um, you know, reactions to this. Some people are saying that, oh, no, it was an explosion. Others are saying this. But, I mean, if you want to look at it, it's not like we're security experts, but you can understand the basics. If it was an explosion, then we should have expected to see that some part of the church is actually brought down because it's an explosive device. But that's not the case. As a case of having people, you see blood everywhere. And the question is, how did we even get to this point? How did we even get to it? So security is a major issue. I remember that the reason that you have this government in 2015 is that security would be on top of the bonnet. Security is priority. That lives and property would be guaranteed for safety. And that's what, you know, Buhari, uh, the Buhari administration is about protection of lives and property. I mean, the issue of insecurity would be, you know, in the past. But that's not the case. And, and like I, I rightly mentioned, we have been going through all of this. So we say that there are unknown 
gone men, men who have, uh, we can identify. It feels like it's a hopeless situation. We don't know who these persons are. But let's not also, also forget that it's getting very close. It's getting close to everywhere. It's not longer safe. And it's just, this is a reminder to government across quarters, as a reminder to government in different quarters in the 36 states of the Federation, including the FCT, that the major reason that you are in position of government is that you are responsible for providing security, protecting the lives of the people as well as their properties. And for us, over time, this failure to that we don't care who these people are, whether they, you know, you see people are coming from Mali, they are coming from outside of the country. How did they even get in the first place? Let's even begin to look at the dynamics. We have the NIN, that's the NIN. How many persons have been traced? How many persons have been arrested? None. Okay? And so, so that's on the one hand. And on the other hand, you know, we just, we, we just keep, uh, we have seen condemnation. We have seen the president saying, oh, it's condemnable. They are demonic. It's a, it's a combination of demonic forces conniving, you know, to carry. No, they're not demonic. He might be a figure of speech, but these are human beings. These are persons who have gotten, where they, I, we don't care where they come from. I mean, I'm just saying, these are human beings who have come into our space to cause havoc. And what's the essence of government? We have the Nigerian police force. We have the might. We have what it takes. But you see, um, these persons have lost their lives. For what, for what exactly? We can't tell. We, we need to move away from that because uh, it's really sad and uh, we can't constantly dwell on it. But it feels like there's a circle, and the question and what we're asking for is that we must break the circle of saying the mass shooting, mass attack, people have been killed, and then oh, we, we condemn the attacks, and that's it. And then we get back to normalcy. Because after today, everybody's going to, if we haven't already returned to, uh, it's okay, it's fine, we're going about our businesses. And not forgetting that it might just also be your turn, because no one is actually safe. How, how far have we constantly, the constitution, we can't say mother is mother. And people go about committing this crime, taking the lives of people. We, I can't say innocent because if someone has committed a crime against you, then you have the law. That's why you have government. Then that's why you have different means to actually lodge your complaints. Before it's, it's a situation where you have people take laws. People just wake up and shoot people and just kill people. And we don't know these persons. We can't identify them. We can't arrest them. We don't know where they are. We don't know where they came from. Our hands, you know, folded. We're just there. And we're saying that the unknown people, terror, terrorists, you know, just kill people. And then and that's it. And that's enough. So we ask ourselves, where is the position of the Nigerian police? Saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that lives and properties are protected. And then also ensuring that this, you know, uh, safety, you, you want to talk about uh, peace. Right? And, and, and to some extent, we've been very great, great in dragging in, in the military. The military has no business in, in, in a civil society. But we have dragged in the military into it. And so where's the military? Where are all the forces? Where, where's everything? How did this happen? And how can this continue? Because, you know, everyone will just get out with it. But we move away from that. Uh, the fact that you have a mob who actually lynch a vigilante member over blasphemy. So this is not the first time. We need to establish the fact that this has been going on where people take the laws into their hands in the name of blasphemy hiding under this umbrella to perpetrate evil and commit this heinous crime and nothing has been done. Just a quick reminder that we haven't gotten over the issue of Deborah who was, you know, stoned and burned to death. And now we're talking about, uh, you know, a man who has also been stoned to death and lynched at the Lube timber market in Abuja over alleged blasphemy. According to the report, this argument actually ensued between two vigilantes, uh, vigilante operatives. So you had this other man who was saying um, that there's a, there's a criteria, there's a rule in the markets that you're not expected to sell at a certain time. And so he was actually accosted. You can't be here. I will arrest you by all means. And so uh, the next thing, even if, I mean, even if you beg me in the name of Allah in court, 
This is what actually generated to all of this. And so according to it, the problem started or the argument uh, started, you know, between this uh, vigilante operatives and uh, the, the, the fact that, you know, an arrest of the other one would actually happen. It actually went from bad to worse uh, at a time where you have, uh, you know, this person saying, oh, uh, the, the name of Allah has been blasphemed. You can see that on the screen. You can see what's going on. He was stoned, and then the guard tires. You see the number of persons um, who are agreeing to this particular act, which is barbaric. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, even if you can't even say because, I mean, it's dual, so you have the sh uh, Sharia, uh, Sharia law, which is also enshrined in the Constitution. It talks about blasphemy. The law makes provision for the issue of blasphemy. Should people take the laws into their hands? But what is constantly happening is that uh, we have really not been able to put our foot down to arrest those who are perpetuating this crime and doing this evil. And so we constantly hide under the fact that, oh, this is blasphemy. How many persons have been arrested? What's he talking about the issue of Deborah? Those who committed this crime, I mean, those who were responsible for the death of Deborah, have they been arrested? So we have another one. And so we constantly embolden people to take laws into their hands. It feels like we live in a banana republic. It feels like it's a lawless nation where people can take laws into their hands in the name of blasphemy, in the name of religion. So if you offend me now, it's okay for me to, you know, just wake up and take your life and that's it and nothing happens. What's the essence of government and what's the essence of governance? That's another question that we constantly ask. But we're hoping that um, the, the, the relevant quarters, that the government will wake up to this because this is, you know, the issue of the government. Government cannot be left out of this equation. The reason that we have government is because that government will do the needful. They have decided that we'll uh, protect lives and property, which is the primary reason that they exist. And in turn, the people would obey, pay their taxes. So we're hoping that the government would rise up in different quarters, put their feet down, because this is a crime that has been committed against uh, a human being, because everyone has a right to life, has been enshrined by the Constitution, and that has been caught short. And we can't fold our arms and act like nothing has happened. And I said, on that one, we'll quickly move away from that. You also have on top trending this morning, National Assembly workers begin strike on that. So I think it's, it's a conversation that we have had. It's not the first time that we're having members of National Assembly asking or saying that they are going to embark on strike due to unpaid arrears. Uh, this is something that's going on. But you see that the workers of the National Assembly, uh, under the auspices of Parliamentary Staff Association of Nigeria, have commenced an indefinite strike over the not payment of a backlog of salary, salaries and allowances by management. And so uh, Penson issued the strike notice via a statement issued by its Secretary General. And in that statement, they are saying that uh, they declare indefinite strike to demand full implementation of the revised conditions of the service of 2018. The association stated that the industrial action was coming from or coming after the three notice to the management led by the clerk to the National Assembly. I mean, how long can we continue like this? The workforce. So I think that, you know, the Nigerian workforce is under a lot of slavery. It, it's a system. You can't continue like this. Who protects the interests of the workers? I mean, even with all of this strike, and, and all of these people, you belong to a certain religion. Whether you're a Christian or you're not a Christian, you probably might just be a Muslim. But what, all, what, what does this religion say about these things? It's really saddening, and I really do not even want to get into this conversation. But how do people sleep knowing that you haven't paid those who worked for you? the National Assembly uh, starting that strike. And I'm sure that this goes, because it's the National Assembly workers, and that's why you're having this on top of the front burner. But how about a lot of persons who haven't been paid, who are working? You have so many people who have been taken advantage of. And so where is the dignity of labor? That's where we leave this at on Top Trending this morning. When we return, it'll be time for us to look at the front pages of the National Dailies. We ask that you stay with us. Good morning.